Maude is a groundbreaking television series from 1972 that follows the life of Maude Finley, a confident, outspoken, and politically active woman. This show was ahead of its time, tackling issues that were often avoided on TV. It's known for its humor as well as its willingness to address serious topics. As you watch, you'll find moments that make you laugh, surprise you, and maybe even bring a tear to your eye. Now, let's talk about the characters. There are so many memorable ones, but if I had to pick a favorite, it would be Maude herself. Her strength and sharp wit never fail to impress. What about you? Which character from Maude stands out to you the most? And do you have a special memory or experience related to this series? Your stories and memories are important to us, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching for more on the Unforgettable Mod. Boss Carol. Who's the good looking guy? It's me. <laughs> Mod is a television show that started in 1972. It is about Maud Finley, a very outspoken and independent woman living in Tuckahoe, New York. She often finds herself in the middle of various social and political issues. The show is set in her home where she lives with her fourth husband, Walter, her divorced daughter, Carol, and her grandson, Philip. Maud is known for her sharp wit and willingness to challenge social norms. The show was notable for addressing topics that were controversial at the time, such as women's rights and race relations. It won several awards, including Emmy Awards for its star, B. Arthur, who played Mon. The show was a milestone for television as it tackled subjects that were not commonly discussed openly. It ran for six seasons until 1978. Well, the bedroom is a chocolate brown. <laughs> Despite sharing the screen for over a decade, Rue McClanahan described her relationship with B. Arthur as distant, highlighting Arthur's unique personality. Contrastingly, the show itself struggled to find the same success in syndication as its contemporaries and even its own spinoff. Audrey and Barbo, however, credits her growth in acting to the guidance she received from Arthur, dating back to their time together on Broadway long before their television collaboration. The waiter. <laughs> Listen, mother. A token black guest. B. Arthur's talent was recognized with a Tony Award for her performance in MAME in 1966, a role she shared the stage with Angela Lansbury. Her acting excellence continued to be acknowledged with Emmy Awards for her roles in two well-loved television series. Meanwhile, Rue McClanahan's transformation on screen was quite literal. Initially presented as an older character, her youthful makeover was later integrated into the storyline through a facelift plot. This change allowed her to step away from heavy makeup and gray wigs. The casting decisions for the Golden Girls took a creative turn, swapping the roles initially considered for Betty White and Rue McClanahan to avoid repeating past typecasting, leading to a fresh dynamic among the characters. You know what your problem is? You resent my going to church because it makes you feel guilty. Come on. on the set of the show, Audrey and Barbo and B. Arthur developed a strong working bond, one that Barbo fondly remembers. Their chemistry was a key element of the show's dynamic. In a similar vein, Esther Roll's encounter with John Amos would prove significant, as it led to Amos reprising his role as her spouse in the subsequent series Good Times, albeit under a different first name. This role continued until his departure from the show in 1976. B. Arthur once expressed a preference for Marsha Rod to play the role of Carol Trainer, citing Rod's portrayal as more assertive, which she believed added a spark to their on-screen conflicts. Despite this, Barbo was cast for the series, bringing a gentler interpretation to the character, which was a point of contention for Arthur. Two campaign poster, HFB. Henry Fonda for president. In a notable collaboration, B. Arthur and Rue McClanahan shared the screen before they became household names in another popular show. Their chemistry was evident and would later be a significant draw for audiences. Meanwhile, Johnny Brown, Esther Roll, and John Amos were part of the cast before they moved on to a successful sitcom of their own. Their appearances were complemented by guest spots from Tommy Blackwell, Ron Glass, and Conchata Farrell, who also appeared in both series. The show took a bold turn when the lead character stepped into politics, becoming a congresswoman in the final episodes. The storyline was set to continue, but the lead actress's decision to not pursue the new direction led to the show's conclusion. 
This narrative thread was later picked up in a different form for Bill Macy's subsequent project. If a little silver bell rang in your ear every time I thought of you, your sweet little head. In a surprising turn at the 1974 Emmy Awards, actor Bill Macy caused a stir with an unexpected prank that had long-lasting repercussions for the show he was a part of. His actions led to a ban on future Emmy considerations for the series, with the exception of B. Arthur's win in 1977. Despite this, the show held a special place in producer Norman Lear's heart, being his personal favorite. Adding to the show's memorable moments, characters Maude and Florida once performed the classic Me and My Shadow, showcasing the dynamic between the two. This series not only pushed boundaries with its content, but also left a notable mark with its behind-the-scenes stories and on-screen chemistry. Disgusting! <laughs> Shackles. <laughs> the transition of characters and behind-the-scenes events often shape a show's journey. In a notable crossover, the character Carol first appeared in another series portrayed by Marsha Rod. However, when given a show of her own, Adrian Barbo took over the role. The series' conclusion was influenced by personal circumstances. Bill Macy revealed that the lead actress's divorce played a key role in the decision to end the production. She faced challenges during the final season, leading to her desire to bring the show to a close. Additionally, the show featured guest appearances by established actors like John Wayne, who was already familiar with the sitcom format through his work on Lucille Ball's shows, bringing his experience to a similar episode on this show. Whether you give a hundred dollars, in a unique crossover of life and art, Conrad Bain was joined on screen by his real-life twin Bonar in the episode titled Vivian's Surprise. The special appearance added a layer of authenticity to the show's dynamic. The series also paid homage to its roots by incorporating footage originally filmed for All in the Family Justice for All into its opening sequence. This creative choice provided a glimpse into an earlier era as evidenced by the vintage cars from the 1960s that adorned the scenes. Furthermore, the talented Esther role was handpicked by producer Norman Lear for the role of Florida Evans, first introduced in this series before becoming a central figure in the spin-off Good Times. Her casting was a direct result of her impressive Broadway performances, which caught Lear's attention and led to her memorable portrayal. Maud, I know this is none of my business, but... In a notable shift from tradition, the sixth season introduced a tag scene at the conclusion of each episode, deviating from the established two-act structure without lead-ins or tags. This change marked a first for a sitcom created by Norman Lear. Additionally, the storyline involving the lead character's abortion, which was a significant plot point in a previous episode, was not addressed in subsequent episodes. Among the cast and guest stars John Wayne, an Academy Award-winning actor, stood out with his guest appearance in an episode, bringing a touch of Hollywood prestige to the show. She'd be here if she could. I mean, she knows how much this ball means to you. Oh, she... Before finding television success, Bill Macy explored various entertainment roles, from poetry readings to small parts in movies and comedy records. His breakthrough came as the husband of B. Arthur's character in a show that championed feminist themes. Off-screen, Macy and Arthur shared a close friendship, with only a slight age difference between them. Fred Grandy, known for his role as Chris, the fiancé of Carol, would later gain fame on the love boat as Gopher. Meanwhile, Adrian Barbo stepped into the role of Carol Trainer after Marsha Rod declined to leave her theater career for a television series contract. like employees you're my close friends i mean look at you drinking carol o'connor once likened b arthur to nancy walker noting both actresses ability to deliver lines with biting humor in a unique twist of casting conrad bain's identical twin bonar bain appeared as both an evil counterpart and a sibling in different television productions the show's third season stood out for not having any episodes that span multiple parts Despite its initial success, by the end of this season, the audience's enthusiasm waned and the series saw a significant drop in ratings. This decline marked a challenging period for B. Arthur, who faced reluctance from NBC when being cast for the Golden Girls due to her association with her previous character. 
However, Susan Harris' insistence on casting Arthur paid off, as she won over audiences with her portrayal of Dorothy Spornak, leading the Golden Girls to become a television favorite. What kind of man is he? I have no idea. I've never met him, but he is really driving me up a wall. Now, why does he want to read? A central figure in television history, B. Arthur, was a consistent presence on screen, holding the distinction of being the sole actor to appear in every installment of her show's six-year tenure. Her portrayal of strong, opinionated women left a significant mark on the medium. Notably, her response to a controversial episode reflects her thoughtful engagement with the audience's diverse opinions, highlighting her awareness of the societal issues of her time. Her candid discussion about the topic of abortion, especially in the context of her personal background, reveals the depth of consideration given to such a sensitive subject matter. A woman like you can do it. You know, uh, after Fred was arrested for embezzling, I hear Gwen took to the... In the landscape of television, a mentorship can lead to significant opportunities for emerging actors. This was the case for Adrian Barbo, who, under the guidance of B. Arthur, made her television debut in a notable role that lasted for a majority of the show's episodes. Their dynamic was not just confined to the screen, it extended to promotional appearances years later, highlighting the enduring connection between the cast members. In a memorable episode, a humorous plot mirrors a similar jest from a predecessor show, showcasing the series' ability to blend humor with commentary on marital dynamics. The reunion of the two actresses on a talk show in 2007 to promote the show's DVD release further cemented their long-standing professional relationship and the show's continued relevance. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Steve, your fiance's here. In a notable episode, the lead character's prejudiced remarks to her daughter about her daughter's Jewish partner stand out especially considering the actress's own Jewish heritage. The show's cultural impact was evident as it became the subject of satire in popular media, including a spoof in Mad Magazine and a parody segment on The Carol Burnett Show. Additionally, the actress who first portrayed the protagonist's daughter returned in a later episode, not as her original character, but as a new one causing tension within the storyline. This twist added complexity to the relationships and dynamics within the show. God. 